My character has a stuffed Tarrasque. No, not a real one. Just a little one that he carries around with him. In all other regards, he's a tough mercenary who lacks any sense of a soft side. He takes what he wants whenever he wants it, and respects no one who can't beat him in a fight. I will admit that it's somewhat jarring for such a character to carry around a stuffed animal, but I'm rather prone to allowing my characters to think for themselves, and this guy really likes his Tarrasque toy. Even though he enjoys it. Really likes like it. Like, if Eagle likes it, let him have it, you know? <laughs> the other players in my group simply considered it an eccentricity of the character, and didn't think too much about it, especially because their characters were far wider and had odder habits and traits. However, my DM started to obsess about the stuffed animal. Oh, you know, finally, it's going to be like a bag of tricks. Oh, yeah. It could be like a bag of tricks. I didn't originally intend to hide the story behind the stuffed animal from my DM, but when he first asked me what my character's reasons for it was, I got a sense that it wasn't really a good mood to explain it. I just dodged the question, fully intending to explain myself later, but my DM's attitude suddenly soured and he demanded to know, saying that characters couldn't have any secrets that the DM didn't know. Fuck off. (laughs) Ah, come on now. I decided to simply refuse that idea by not telling him the reason why my character had a stuffed animal, and I had enough cheek to still ask for his permission for my character to have a stuffed animal. He likely would have refused if he could come up with a reason that wouldn't invalidate everyone else's characters, but without such a reason, he gave me his permission. Uh, I don't like... I don't see what's wrong with him carrying... I mean, mean, it's kind of soy. But you know, if you if, if you, it's if, one like, of his if, characters' quirks, let and him also do it. this this story was written in two thousand and twelve, so back then that was considered like you know a bit more quirky. quirky. And, you know what I mean? It was like <laughs> OM- well, I'm quirky. Omg, totally land <laughs> yeah. time period. You know, so it wasn't even a really interesting story. He just received the toy as a child, and no one ever explained that only children can play with toys. Oh, oh! It was just supposed to be a minor note of my character. A way to show that he didn't care what others thought about him, and that he had different ideas of what made a man a man. However, my refusal to speak about it made everyone think there was some melodramatic story behind the toy. Like it was the last gift from his dying mother, or a memento of a slain son. I think that's what I would think. I would think it's like yeah. ca- his kid's toy. Yeah, he like something got, either like that. got captured and he wants to try and find him uh, or something. That sounds likely to me. Yeah. I tried to keep the toy as just something that was listed on his character sheet under items, but my DM just couldn't get over the fact that I was keeping a part of my character's story to myself. The DM tried to make my character's life difficult, by having villagers ridicule him for carrying around the toy, and people treating him like he had the mind of a child. When he realised this didn't bother me, and some good role-playing resulted from it, he decided to change tactic by trying to get rid of the toy. Oh, you see, this is where it's going to get personal now. Yeah, don't touch my fucking <laughs> the, the, toy. The, the, this is where this is where it's going to be like, no, you no touchy. No, no touchy. <laughs> no touchy. Fireball started to damage our items. Thieves began to regularly visit us in the night. Ethereal flitchers. Ragamuffins. Morphins. Morphins. Moths and mold. Sunlight and dirt. Everything in the world that could either damage, steal, or eat my character's toy was thrown at it. Of course, my character would try and protect the Tarrasque, often very enthusiastically, until my character's sole defining trait was how much he cared about the toy. Finally, it happened. A black dragon's acid breath, poor reflex saves, and an overwhelming amount of damage. Half of my backpack was destroyed, and the stuffed animal wasn't the hardest of objects. My DM couldn't help but smile. We both understood how a story was crafted, and my character had a very small window in which he had a chance to explain the toy's story. When one of the other players asked about it, he would either have to explain it, or it would just be decided that he never had a story to begin with, and the toy would eventually be forgotten as just a weird quirk of my character. It was either reveal the story while it was relevant, or throw away the chance forever. As much as I didn't want to tell the DM my story, I had to admit that I was trapped. It was just how the story had to go. Otherwise, it would be a bad story. So after we had killed the Black Dragon, the opportunity arose. A player asked me why I had cared so much about the toy. I asked the group if they ever had any toys when they were children. After a brief moment, they all, except for the dry rogue, said they had. Of course. <laughs> of course. Dry rogue's getting busy getting fucking molested, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Jesus Christ. I asked them if they really cared about a particular toy. Really cared about it. Took it with them everywhere. Some of them had. Oddly enough, the DM chimed in saying he remembered also having a stuffed animal he carried about with him everywhere until he was eight. I ignored him and continued. (laughs) (laughs) Good. 
I asked them what happened to that toy. There was a moment of silence as the players thought about it, and I helped them with an answer. You lost it, right? You couldn't find it one day, and you looked everywhere for it. You asked your parents if they had seen it, and they said it would turn up. So, you cried a little here and there, but only because you were lonely. You still thought that you would find it, eventually. Every few days you would search around the house, around the yard, thinking up new places to look even though you knew all the places it could be. The days stretched into weeks, into months, until you lost hope, and had to accept that it was gone. You'd never see it again. You didn't realise. You never even imagined. It never crossed your mind that something could convince your parents that you were too old to carry a toy with you everywhere. That's because you can't see it that way. You don't understand this idea that losing a toy will let you better fit in with society. You don't believe it will help you learn about coping with grief and loss. It will make you more mature. The thing you really can't understand is how your parents can give you something, allow you to grow to love it, to love it more than anything else, and then take it away from you. I watched my parents take mine. They thought I was asleep. I left my home that night because I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand what kind of person could see someone loving something to genuinely care about it and to try and take it away from them. My DM sat across from me, but he couldn't even look at me. Oh, that was good. My heart. That was very sweet. That was a very, very sweet. Uh, that was one of those sweetest stories I think we've done in a while. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm I'm actually happier with that one than I I really didn't think it was going. To, oh, it's going to be a bag of tricks. I know. We're going to get a trask or something like that. You oh, know what I mean? That's that, really that, wholesome. That, that is very wholesome. Next post. Hey guys, we just want to take a second and say thank you to all you guys that come back and enjoy our videos with us. It really does mean a lot and lets us do what we do. As you guys know. Doing what we do is always an uphill battle on YouTube, as YouTube would like to throw the parts of the internet we enjoy under the bus. You guys know all about the YouTube algorithm at this point, and the best way to help us do what we do is by clicking subscribe and clicking the notification bell to stay up to speed with any and all new videos, as well as sharing videos of ours with friends you think would also enjoy what we do here. Also, don't forget to check out our social media links below. We love doing what we do, and it's all thanks to you guys. And for that, we thank you so, so, so much. Now, let's get back to the video. Blacksmith's son. Strong of body, but lacking in education. Foundling. Never knew my real parents. Father was friends with a wizard. Arranged for a scrying. Prophesized to become the greatest warrior and conqueror to ever live. Also prophesized to bring an age of darkness to the lands. Sowing chaos in my wake. Doomed to bring horror and death to all living souls. Kept completely secret for 20 years. Wizard dies. Dividing up the estate reveals he wrote the prophecy down. Village chases me from the town. All of my friends screaming hate at me. Father tries to protect me. Beaten to death instead. Betrothed douses me with lantern oil and lights me on fire. Villagers toss me off a cliff into a river. Puts out fire at least. Wash up on shore many miles away knowing my death is near. Suddenly feel a presence. The blackout. Wake up two weeks later in an isolated, windowless, frigid castle high in the mountains. Hurt everywhere. Flesh healed but still scarred horribly. Beautiful, pale, raven-haired sorceress enters room. Tells me she saw me and saved me during one of her travels. Thank her, but tell her off my plight and how I'm probably better off dead. Doesn't seem to mind for some reason. Says I can stay as long as I like. It's lonely in the mountains. Big titty goth girlfriend in the mountains from <laughs> definitely not definitely not gonna become a war rock guy definitely not by the way <laughs> months later fully healed know the castle fairly well most of the servants are quiet but don't think much of it life of luxury compared to blacksmithing never leave castle but never really need to direct sunlight hurts and burns skin anyway talk with the sorceress often share meals and conversations not that many people other than servants in the castle seems she really is lonely Begins teaching me some basics of magic, reading, and mathematics. Meet Captain of the Guard, who teaches me swordsmanship. Take to it amazingly well, and quickly outmatch everyone else. Make friends with some of the sorceress relatives living there too. Being nobility, they teach me battle strategy, and we have fun with war games on paper. Soon can best anyone in the castle, no matter the handicap. Time passes and study more with sorceress and captain. Eventually learn history and tales of conquering kings. Interested, but still brings up bad memories. Slip into depression. Sorceress tells me not to worry and just do what I want. Together with the captain of the guard, she throws parties and takes me on moonlit rides to cheer me up. Slowly fall in love with her and become best friends with the captain. A year after being saved, tell her my feelings. She's taken aback and runs from the room. 
give chase into your private chambers. Never chase a girl that fucking says no. <laughs> Please have sex with me. <laughs> Coffin and bottles of blood everywhere. Castle full of vampires and undead servants. She's crying, saying how she never meant to trick me. Don't give a single fuck. Kiss Vampire Queen passionately. She reciprocates and we share a night together. Next, Dusk asks for her hand in marriage. She joyfully accepts and announces events to her family of other vampires. Bride-to-be spends more and more time in the depth of the castle as wedding approaches. Captain of the Guard assures me it's fine and normal. Asks me what I'm giving her. What? Run to the library and find out about traditional wedding gifts. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Suddenly, idea. Find a specific magical tomb in the library. Run to find Captain of the Guard. Eventually, day of the wedding. Everything is wonderful. Exchange vows and couldn't be happier. Bride is radiant and happily presents me with my gift. Black suit of invulnerable armour to protect my sensitive skin. Made from her own blood. She will keep me alive, undamaged and immortal as long as she lives. Smile and announce my gift. Captain of the Guard opens ballroom door and dozens of skeletons stride in carrying banners. One for each of the undead legions I've raised. My gift to you, my love, is to make sure you're never lonely again. To you, I shall give you the world itself. I have goosebumps. I, that, that's that, so good. That, that's a really good start off. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a big bad evil guy or if it's character backstory. But it's a very good backstory for a big bad evil guy. Yeah, it's, I think it's so good. I, I think it's a good. I think it's a good starting point. It's de- it definitely level stood to me anyway. Yeah. You know, okay, I'm only joking. I know the guys are going to go, you fucking don't say it. <laughs> but like, I actually thought that was actually quite yeah, nice. Yeah, I liked it. Um, that was good. That was good. I really thought it was going to be more of a warlock though. Yeah. Um, I was th- th- feeling warlock, but then whenever they said, oh, I can't go outside, it's like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> no, anyway, look, we've got a few more. We'll yeah, keep going. next post. Play 3.5 edition D&D. Everyone has decided to roll up monks. We didn't plan this out. We all showed up with insane kung fu backstories, skill names, etc. DM quietly puts away the notes for the game he had been planning. (laughs) Per DM. We start out in a noodle shop. Two monks, one lawful good, one lawful evil, are arguing about the best use of the power bestowed by mastery of kung fu. The good one says that kung fu shows that we all have a place in life. The evil one believes that kung fu masters should rest at the top. My character is a drunken master. Chaotic neutral. DM fate. Saunter over to the table. Soon joined by the other guy. Lawful neutral. We can't agree on anything. Finally say something that lets us stop the philosophical debate. We should decide this like warriors. Initiative rolled. Ones all round. (laughs) Oh my god. Evil did goes first. By virtue of the improved initiative feat. Attempts to flip table aside dramatically. Rolls a two. Having hurt his hand, he decides a flying kick over the table would be better. Rolls acrobatics and attack. One and two. Oh, Fucking hell. Foot catches side of the table, falls on the chair and flips over backwards. I throw my sake at the good dude. He catches it and throws it back. It breaks in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I kick table, breaking it in half. The lantern on the table falls over on me and I go jump in the decorative pond outside to put myself out. The good and the neutral monk stare each other down. The good one attempts to punch him. One, two, one. (laughs) Trips over table, dislocates his own arm. Neutral guy does a backflip out of the way. Rolls acrobatics. One for the jump, one for the landing. Eighteen, three. (laughs) Oh, for God's sake. Crashes into nearby empty table, knocks himself out. This all took slightly less than six seconds. Noodle store guy yells at us for wrecking his shop. Oh my god! You know, I don't know about for me. Such a shit <laughs> show. That is a definition of shit show. <laughs> I don't know about me. I've never been one. I've never really looked at a monk and thought, no, you know what, I want to play, play a monk. monk. I've never had that, but one day I will play Jackie Chan in a ladder factory carrying a baby. <laughs> Fuck <sake. laughs> Someday I will do that. Like he has to be. I have to be carrying a baby at what all times. What movie is that? It's every Jackie Chan. Every movie. Jackie Chan movie. But what's the one with the, all the ladders? I have to all of them. <laughs> Like giant Chan on his ladder will absolutely knock your bollocks and like get like honest to God, who 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 would beat Jackie Chan with a ladder? Who would beat Jackie Chan in general? Yeah, absolutely fucking There's no one many. tell you that. I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. Write in the comments below. Let us know who's gonna beat Jackie Chan with a ladder. <laughs> and he also has to have a baby in his arms because that like gives him like plus ten. You know what I mean? That, that's Swing just... the baby by the ankles. Yeah, <laughs> I've been that guy before. Close friend tries to run a three point five game with a few guys that he knows. 
he's new to DMing, tells us to roll characters beforehand. We're going to be doing a generic fantasy game while he works out the basics. Arrive on game day to see that the rest of the party, four other guys, have all built angsty anime characters that are oh my god so evil. <laughs> and people say, no, no, anime has not had a bad effect on tabletop games in the slightest. This is in 2011. I know, I know. Even like, <laughs> It's always been a thing. It's always been I, a I, thing. I, I think, when, when did the weebiness really kick off? I think, for me, I blame The Last Samurai. It was a great movie. But I think that was the. Yeah. I think that's for me what started no, yeah, like, the weebiness in a lot of people. Yeah. Over here, anyway. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. All are doing that. I'm in a war on two fronts the monsters I fight while I adventure, and the monsters inside of myself. Evil characters. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> make it stop. One is a furry. Oh, for God's sake, you know that was coming. <laughs> One is a furry that tries to turn everything sexual. This was written in 2011, guys. Um, I'm sorry. This whole thing about furries, it's not a new thing. No, it's not. It's been about for a long time. I brought Jam Horn Glitter Gold, Gnome Sorcerer. What a fucking name. <laughs> what a name. Who the fuck plays a gnome? <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take the gnome over the anime characters. Yeah, so I. Fabulous, gaudy, constantly happy, and focused on the flashiest spells possible. Elton John, a gnome for him. <laughs> Yes! Three high charisma and good roles, I quickly end up as the party face. Constantly interfere with the horrible grim dark role playing through use of bags of glitter and strategically placed magic missiles and flares. <laughs> it's like a stage. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> love oh, that's great. DM loves it. Even though grim dark anime heroes keep derailing the story to put themselves in the spotlight as oh my god so grim and evil, Jam Horn puts it right back on track again every time they do. DM gets fed up with player angst and wants to end the campaign. Jamhorn steps into action. Work for a long time out of sight of the party to gather everything I need to achieve lichdom. Jamhorn is evil and has always been lawful evil. Put a plan in motion to kill off the party in ways that can never be traced back to me. Needing the money they have. Still gaudy and fabulous, they all start to have accidents <laughs> in combat that bring them to lower and lower health as the final dungeon run progresses. In the end, it's just me and the furry, having killed the dragon big bad evil guy that was just trying to protect its young. Standing in front of a mountain of gold, he begins to long monologue about how much angst he's feeling and how evil he is for killing the dragon. Walk over to him, tap him on the shoulder, throw glitter in his eyes, disintegrate his ass, begin the final stages of my transformation into a lich. Table is silent. My face went. <laughs> Was it really evil killing That's a furry? That's a really good character. Yeah, I I I love party characters. So I love that. I'm a good I'm a bit, I I'm a sucker for party characters. Yeah. There's a guy that joined our group. He's playing um Trump Trump o ogre. He's playing essentially orange man. He's called he's, he's called Orange Man Bad. Orange. Or, or he's no like he, he's not he doesn't even have a build. No. I get a guy is like oh we'll take this stuff for Trump that kind of man. Let <laughs> yeah, me take this. Let me just take this. It's pretty <laughs> funny. I quite enjoy him. He does do a good voice like you know it adds yeah. to it but like, it's not exactly a build but you know fuck it you know make the most of it uh either way either way i really like these here like we short ones we've been I've, been I've had them on my table for ages yeah like absolutely ages but they're just too small to make a video of so we'll have to like get staple a few them. of them to be able to staple make a video them. yeah you yeah. just kind of staple them together i know it's not the most mm, what be the right word Coherent, a coherent transition. Yeah, you but know, like, but like, I, it's either that or you, I don't. We don't do them. You know, know. what I mean? Because like, and they're good stories, yeah. nonetheless. So we we'll want to do them somehow, and this is the only way we can. Yeah, if you have any of your own stories, definitely. But if you them. like these, like mix mash, but there's plenty of them out there that we yeah. can do them. Yeah, we've got tons you of know. stuff. We've honestly got tons. Yeah. Honestly, the amount of stuff we've got is genuinely years yeah. <laughs> worth of videos. Yeah. Uh, if you put it out there. Uh, but no, look, we'll leave you guys to it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Check you know. out the advert. Check out all the links. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. First time here. Hello. Comment down below. What's you? Have you ever came across like a favorite party? Yeah. Um. Character. Player. Yeah. I, I, I love. Who I love were there? What party. were their traits? Write it down below because it might give me some ideas for my next character. Go yeah. on ahead, and we'll see you in the next video then. Bye.